Welcome to Always Analog, where we celebrate the beauty of analog technology in the digital world. Today we have a pencil review, uh, something from the General Pencil Company uh, in New Jersey, American company manufacturing pencils still. Uh, been in business uh, well over a hundred years. And um, a pencil that is uh, not uh, unfamiliar to me in that I believe I have reviewed their Pacific pencil before. However, when I did so, it was a Pacific number two. Uh, recently on the General's website, I see that they are offering Pacifics in number one. Um, and so I love a number one pencil. So I was quick to order a dozen of them. And uh, I think of the Pacific as, you know, perhaps um, equivalent to, you know, their semi-hex uh, pencil, I think they consider to be their sort of top of the line everyday pencil akin to maybe they're, they're positioning it um, alongside a Ticonderoga. Uh, the Pacific, I think, um, perhaps is more uh, positioned to be akin to a um, Musgrave Harvest, perhaps. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, but Anyways, it is a pencil that I wanted to try, and so let's look at it. So first of all, this is how it comes packaged in a cardboard band wrapper, like so. Pencils of superior quality, um, made in USA. And this actually looks almost retro to me, like something that you would have found on pencils many, many years ago and perhaps the design is old but they're still using these bands and I think that's great. So the pencil itself is in very traditional yellow tone, yellow gold and um, in this case these ferrules are chrome toned with pink erasers. They are hexagonal pencils. Let's do a top view look at that wood I think I it is safe to say sure looks like cedar to me um, and I would say uh, that for the most part the core position seems to be fairly centered um, also not a lot of uh, over drip here on the end um, not that that matters entirely, but uh, sometimes it sure looks neater when you just see the wood and the graphite coming through the end. These will have the um, general pencil sort of cut to the corners, uh, semi-hex, a soft corner. Um, and I let us take one out for a yet a closer look at the pencil itself. So, uh, fairly pedestrian ferrule. Um, nothing uh, too exciting there, but uh, crimped on. Eraser crimped on, ferrule crimped on. Uh, fairly cleanly around the edge. I don't see some splintering or paint chip. The imprint is in gold, or I'm sorry, is in chrome foil. So that's sort of how it, it, it shows here. Um, and there is only printing on what I can see on one side. And here it is, USA Generals Pacific. Um, it has their trademark, which is the semi-hex profile there. 365 is the model number and embossed on the pencil is bonded lead. 
Something you're not seeing a lot of on pencils anymore, and they may be bonded, but the fact that they used to tell you they were bonded, um, uh, meaning that the core here is bonded to the wood uh, on the inside so that uh, it's a technique, I think, uh, to help assure less frequent breaks and things like that. So anyways, they'll tell you it's bonded lead. So there's the pencil. Um, and I think what we must do next is sharpen it and do some writing. I have chosen to sharpen this manually just to sort of get a look at that wood as it comes off. You can see that nice red cedar, the ribbon coming off the blade here. Very nice, wonderful aroma of the pencil. Really making a beautiful blossom there of, of pencil shavings. Isn't that pretty? So, um, look at that nice okay here's our point so we've got it sharpened let me grab a pad somewhere okay again this is uh, number one Hmm. So, a couple of things. One, I'm sure you can hear the pencil. It's got a little scratch to it uh, as it grabs the paper. Um, not in any negative way. Uh, I think it's uh, about right. I think the tone of the pencil is just a skosh darker. Uh, than a number two. I, from memory, uh, I would, uh, in uh, previous experience, I'm going to say that I think the general pencil company's number one core is not quite as soft or as dark as the Musgrave's number one core is. Um, and perhaps I need, we'll have to do a comparison between this pencil, say, and a Harvest number one, um, just to be sure. Let me see if I have one handy. Okay, I was able to put my hand on a Musgrave Harvest number one. So, I mean, there's some aesthetic differences, of course, paint color and 
imprint color and ferrule and whatever. Um, but what I'm interested to see is um, the Pacific number one. I think you can hear the difference, and I think you can see the difference. Right? Yeah. So I think, to me, uh, the General's number one core is almost up to a Musgrave number two. Um, and this is really a General's, maybe 2B or more, by comparison. Okay, so there's that. But let's get back to the pencil at hand, which is our Pacific. number one. Again, you can look, uh, if you do a search on my, on the channel here, Always Analog, for the Pacific number two, it will come up. It was some time ago that I did the review. Um, I will say, too, for a number one pencil, the smudge drag, frankly, is fairly minimal. Um, so, we do have an eraser. I'm anxious to try it. I have found that often I like the erasers on a General's pencil. I think they do pretty well on the cedar points in particular come to mind this one however is lousy look at that terrible really did a crummy job yeah nope um, all right let's try some other eraser options I'm surprised. I general usually general erasers are better. Very good here with a Pentel. Let's try a Pearl. Pretty good. Um, let's try a foam. Eraser. I find that oh, beautiful. Foam erasers really take the lightest amount of pressure uh, to remove the greatest amount of graphite. How about a magic rub? Okay. Oh, what else do we have? Got a Nataraj eraser here. All right. You know, we don't expect number ones to uh, necessarily lift completely off the, the paper. Um, so I'm not surprised that we have a little bit of shadowing here, although a couple of the erasers did a great job. But boy, that attached eraser, thumbs down. Lousy. Again, for a number one, uh, it's okay. The B minus is a generous, probably, eval. But, anyways, we'll do a little bit more writing with this.
very comfortable to hold for a hex pencil. Mm -hmm. Here's our point retention. So again, number one, you don't expect it um, to hold uh, for an extended period of time. But okay, so overall, I like the pencil. I wish it was a little softer, a little darker, a little more akin to the Harvest number one, which I really like. And um, uh, use with great regularity, but but uh, uh, the Pacific number one, uh, it is again. I'd have to look for a. Let me see. <laughs> now let me see if I can find a Pacific number two. Hold on. Okay, of course I couldn't find a Pacific number two. I've got one somewhere, but I don't know where it is. But again, if we want to say. Here's the Pacific number one, and we take another General's pencil, in this case, the calendar, uh, and which is a number two. Uh, what else do I have in the General's family? Here's a semi-hex number two. And here is a badger number two. Okay. You know, um... Well, you know, you're looking at a number one here. You could all, <laughs> I don't know. I, you know what, these almost, the tone on these number twos with general cores are very similar among the calendar, the semi-hex, and the badger. And I dare say they are as dark, if not a shade darker than the Pacific number one. I don't know what it all means, folks. I just know that this is the way these pencils perform. So, uh, not all number ones are the same. Not all number twos are the same. Those of us in the pencil community are well aware um, but among uh, the same manufacturer there's even some variations as you can see so back to our Pacific number one thank you so much for hanging out with me for this review and comparison and uh, if you like the videos share like subscribe all that good stuff if you're so inclined I look forward to seeing you again real soon here on Always Analog.